Hey, welcome to the next lesson of our tutorial series on how to create the game Among Us in Unity. I am super pumped for this video as we're going to be covering one of the most important game mechanics for Among Us, which is the field of view lighting system. Now real quick, I want to say thank you to my brother Mark for being able to put out his mini game lesson as I was a bit under the weather with a slight cold. And as you can tell, my voice is still recovering. So we'll see how this tutorial goes. All right, so here I have our Among Us project open inside of Unity. And before we get started on the lighting system, I wanna first demo what we'll end up with by the end of this video. All right, so here I have two astronauts within my scene. One I can control and the other is to represent another player. You also notice that I've added the background of the spaceship to give our scene a little more context. And I've added four cube objects which are being used to cast shadows on our scene. And these shadows can move as my player moves, and they can cover up other objects in our scene, such as players. Now to create this lighting system, we're actually going to reference the code of another developer on YouTube, and this developer is Chris Caldwell. Now a big part of game development is learning from others, and I'll admit that I too have to research a lot of things. So while I was looking for a solution on how to create the lighting system for Among Us, I stumbled across this video where Chris goes over a similar lighting system that he created. And with this video, he provides a link to his script on GitHub. And so for the sake of this tutorial, rather than having to come up with our own lighting system, we're going to use his script as a baseline and make a few modifications to work for our game. If you want to know exactly how his script works, then I'm sure Chris will appreciate it if you watch his video, which I've linked to in the description below. But for now, let's click on his GitHub link, which I've also added to the description of this video. Once here, you'll want to click on the download code button, and we'll just click download zip. You'll then need to pick the file location where you want this zip folder to be saved. I'm going to click cancel because I've already downloaded it. Once downloaded, you'll need to extract this zip file, after which we can open this folder. Inside this file, you'll find a Unity project, and we'll just go into Assets. And then there's one script that we need from this project, which is the Lightcaster script. And so to keep this script separate from our other scripts in our Among Us project, I've just clicked and dragged this into the Assets folder. Now before we make our modifications to this script, let me explain how this lighting system works. This lighting system uses what's called a render texture, which is a texture that's being updated from a camera in your scene. And this render texture is being used as a reverse mask. And I say a reverse mask because rather than hiding an object to show what's behind it, we're using this render texture to show something in front of another object. And so here I have a cube which our render texture is being applied to, and as I move this cube around our scene, you can see how it reveals objects in front of our background. Now the Lightcaster script takes this cube and modifies its mesh to fit the visible area of our scene from any given point, and it does this using raycasts. Now one thing that I do want to say is that there's probably a number of ways to go about creating a lighting system similar to this, and I've noticed in using the system that it's not a perfect solution or optimized. And so if you're creating a similar lighting system on a game you plan to publish, I'd recommend finding a way to optimize the system even more by looking at other examples and doing more research. And another reason why I'm using this script is because of how easy it is to implement into our project. Now since we haven't covered any of the code in this script, I've only highlighted the code that I've modified and I've highlighted it in blue. So there's a few variables that I've added to this script. The first is a serialized field of type layer mask and I've called it ignore me. The second is a serialized field of type float called get radius. And the third is another serialized field of type layer mask called wall mask. The next change that I've made to this script is inside our update function where I've added a new function called get walls. Now in the original script, there's this variable, which is an array of colliders called scene objects. And in the example project, this variable is being set in the inspector before the game plays. But I wanted to dynamically set this variable to be any nearby objects to our player. And so I've created this get walls function, which is a void function. And all we're doing inside this function is setting the scene objects variable equal to 
physics.overlapsphere, and we're passing in transform.position for the first parameter, then get radius for the second parameter, and our wall mask for the third parameter. The overlap sphere function is kind of like a combination between a raycast and the on trigger enter function. And it returns an array of colliders, which is good because that's the type of our scene objects variable. Now there's one other change that I made to this script, which is within the update function. And it's in these two ray casts where I've added a final parameter for the layer mask of these ray casts. And I'm passing in the inverse of our ignore me variable. This will make it so that these ray casts will pass through any objects we want them to ignore. So once you've added the script to your project and you've made the modifications, we can go ahead and save this script and go back to Unity. Once we're back inside Unity, the first thing that we'll do is add some new layers to our project. And so I'll select any object and go over to the inspector and select the layer drop down menu. We'll then click on add layer. And the two layers that we need to add are other side and wall. Once we have these layers created, we need to make a few changes to our scene. And the first change is with our main camera. All we have to do for this camera is select the culling mask drop down menu and we want to disable the other side and wall layer options. We can then duplicate our camera and make the duplicated camera a child to our main camera. For this camera, we want to select the culling mask and set it to other side only. And we want to set the depth of this camera to be negative one. This camera will be used to capture our render texture. And so let's go ahead and create that asset now. All right, so here I have a new folder called materials. And inside this folder, I have three things. I have a shader script, a material, and a render texture. Now for the shader script, you can create this asset by right-clicking in your project window, going up to create, then shader, and we'll select unlit shader. I've then named this shader script mask shader, and I'll open it up in our coding environment. Now this is what the shader script looks like, but I'm actually not going to walk through it as I got this script from this form here. You can find a link to this form in the description below, and I'll provide this shader script for free on our website. Once you have this shader script created, we can save it and go back to Unity. We then want to create a material from the shader. So you can right click in your project window, go up to create, then select material. You can then name this material to other side mask. And in the shader drop down menu, we want to go to unlit and select screen space texture. We then need to create the render texture to apply to this texture field here. So to create render texture, we'll right click in the project window, go up to create, and select render texture. I've then renamed this to other side and I've set the size to 1920 by 1080. We then want to select our second camera from our hierarchy and we'll drag our render texture into the target texture field. Your render texture should then be updated to be what your camera sees within your scene. We can then select our material and we'll drag our render texture into the texture field. Now the next objects that we have within our scene are our player prefabs but we'll skip over those for now. What we want to create at this point in time are the cubes and walls in our scene. And for now, I've just created four cubes that I've placed randomly around my players. And then I've created four more cubes that I've scaled up to create the outer walls of my playable area. Now for all of these cubes, we want to make sure that the layer is set to wall and that the Z position is the same as our player which is zero. The next object in our scene is our reverse light mask. This object is a 3D cube, which I've renamed to light mask. When you create this cube, you'll want to go ahead and remove the box collider component from this object. And then all we have to do is set the material and you'll want to set it to your other side mask material. The last two new objects in my hierarchy are the backgrounds. These are just 2D sprites. So you can create them by right clicking in the hierarchy going down to 2D object and selecting Sprite. I've renamed this object to be Map, and I've set the Sprite image to be this low resolution image of the spaceship in Among Us. The reason why it's low res is because it's a placeholder and I'm not planning on using it for more than just this tutorial series. But if you want to use the same low res image as a placeholder for your project, you can once again download it for free on our website. And I've left a link to that in the description below. Now, once you set the sprite render component, you'll want to scale up this object so that it's about the right size relative to your player sprites. You also want to push these sprites back so that they're behind everything else in our scene. And so I've set the Z position to 5. 
For this first bright object, I've also set the order in layer to negative one, and we want to set the layer to the other side layer. We can then duplicate this object, and all we have to do for this object is set the layer back to default. We then want to set the color of the sprite renderer to be a dark gray, and we want to set the order in layer to a positive one. Now the last thing that we need to do for our project before we can test it is set up the player prefab. Now the first change that I've made to our player is the layer, which I've set to the other side. This will make it so that other players are hidden from view when they're in the shadows. We then need to apply our light cast script to this object, and so you'll select the script from your assets folder and drag it onto the inspector. Then for the ignore me mask, we want to set it to just the other side. For the get radius variable, we'll set it to something like 20. For the wall mask, we'll set it to wall. We then don't need to do anything with the scene objects array, as we've modified the script to dynamically get the nearby colliders. Then for the light rays variable, we want to take our light mask object and drag it in there. For the offset variable, I'm going to bump it up to something like 0.05, and then the last two variables are actually for debugging if you want to see all the raycasts that are being used when we test our project. And finally, make sure that you apply these changes to your player prefab object. Now at this point in time, you should have a working field of view or shadow cast system. And so we'll just test out our project one more time. And there we go, it's all working in our scene and you can see how it hides our player objects. And that's everything that we're gonna cover in this lesson on how to create the field of view lighting system for Among Us. If you like this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date with all our latest videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.